Hello and welcome to The Voice of Todd. I'm Tom and in this video I'm going to talk about my thoughts on The Tomorrow War. This is the 2021 movie that I really hoped would blow me away. Uh, the trailers had pretty much everything you'd want for a blockbuster. Chris Pratt, aliens, sci-fi, crazy story idea. Let's see if this actually delivers. First, these movie reviews don't contain spoilers. Mild spoilers in this one, I will be honest, but nothing that you probably haven't already worked out from one of the trailers. Uh, if you want to check this movie out, you can. It's on Amazon Prime right now. If you have access to Amazon Prime, that is. The film is directed by Chris McKay of the Lego Batman movie fame and written by Zach Dean, writer of Deadfall and 24 Hours to Live. Between them, there aren't many credits, so this could be, I mean, outside of the Lego Batman movie, one of the bigger films that they've worked on. The movie stars the aforementioned Chris Pratt as Dan Forster, J.K. Simmons as James Forster, Betty Gilpin as Amy Forster, Sam Richardson as Charlie, Edwin Hodge as Dorian, and Yvonne Stachowski as Romeo Command. The synopsis from IMDb, a family man is drafted to fight in a future war where the fate of humanity relies on his ability to confront the past. Yeah. So with the admin out of the way, let's uh, just, let's just dive in, see what I thought. Honestly, you've probably already gathered this. <laughs> Honestly, this was the disappointment uh, maybe not of the year, but certainly of the last few movies I've watched. Uh, the disappointment started very early on, actually, before we even saw a frame of footage. Because I realised that Skydance had a part to play in the production of this. Now, Skydance don't always produce bad movies. I did love The Old Guard, and I absolutely adore Annihilation. But their overall record isn't very good. And my heart sank when I realised they were involved. And it didn't get any better from that point. The movie is two hours and 20 minutes long and struggles to justify being any longer than an hour and a half, in my opinion. The story is paper thin, and you already know every story beat because you've seen any other time travel movie. There's nothing original in this, and the top quality cast isn't anywhere near enough to save it from its failings. I love Chris Pratt. I have since I saw Andy in Parks and Rec, and the first trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy cemented his rise to stardom in my mind. But even his trademark charm, and usual light-hearted action hero antics, only made me wish this movie would hurry up and end so I could do something else with my time. Nobody really shines here, sadly. They're just there, wrapped up in a totally ridiculous story that is about as thin as you'd expect from a 2000 sci-fi B-movie and the CGI isn't of much better quality than those either. The movie seems to focus as a counselling session for the writer to dispel whatever feelings of abandonment he felt or imagines people feel when a parent leaves and these daddy issues are the biggest anchor that weighs the movie down. We get an extended look at the kind of man that Chris Pratt's Forster is a good and loving husband and father who pushes himself to be the best he can and save the world. And it's as predictable as that. The other characters are very much a sideshow, and with half the bigger names only being in there for a moment, I can never fault a J.K. Simmons performance, but this movie really pushes that to the limit too. He's just there. There are the current Hollywood themes that you would expect from a Skydance movie. Bad fathers, bad writing, boring, predictable action scenes. And honestly, this seems to plague all kinds of movies outside the MCU for the past five years. This isn't a Skydance problem, it's a Hollywood problem. Although I would argue that half the MCU movies would fall into that category too. Don't get me wrong, we've had some amazing movies in that time. But they're increasingly few and far between at the moment. And with cinemas reopening and audiences rushing back to enjoy a big blockbuster, I really hoped that we would get something of quality soon. Because this isn't it. Granted, the pandemic has hurt cinemas. 
but it's not what will kill them. Hollywood will. Let me be clear though, while I didn't enjoy this movie at all, it isn't the worst film I've seen this year. That award still goes to Jiu Jitsu. You can check out my review at the end of this video. And with Black Widow just around the corner and our first look at the MCU Phase 4 movies, albeit this is a flashback and a film we should have had 10 years ago, we're going to see which direction the biggest beacon of action movie quality an audience draw has gone. And based on the Marvel TV shows, I'm hoping for the best, but braced for the worst. But as far as upcoming blockbuster movies as they would like to describe the Tomorrow War as, there's only one that I'm actually excited about, and that's Dune, and hopefully Muad'Dib can save us. Because if not, the future does not look good for movies. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to The Voice of Todd for more movie and game news, reviews, whatever else I want to talk about. After a brief hiatus, I'll be back with streaming and making videos solely on YouTube. So if you want to join me, hit that subscribe button. You'll be notified if you want, whenever I go live or a new video drops. Stay tuned for much more content. And as always, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.